I hate how hard it is to get out of bed in the morning. So in this video, I set off to find an answer to this question. How can I find a way to get out of bed faster? I found three unusually powerful keys to unlocking this solution. And I'm not talking about the common, you know, don't eat before you go to bed kind of stuff. Those are great, but they kind of have their place. And I decided to go a little deeper. For example, something I found is a eight to $9 Amazon item that will help kickstart your internal clock first thing in the morning when you wake up. Pretty cool, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. The first thing I discovered was I was asking the wrong question. The answer to how to get out of bed faster is actually easily solved. The only problem is that the solutions are borderline medieval torture. And while a bed that dumps you onto the floor and solving algebra problems to turn off an alarm clock will in fact wake you up, it also doubles as a way to shower you in stress and anxiety during one of the most vulnerable times of your daily existence. Here we have a classic example of how asking a better question will give you a better answer. So what we really want to be asking here or a better question to be asking is, how can I get out of bed faster while exerting the same amount of effort? It's basically the definition of productivity. You put the same amount of time in and you get better results or more results. And after researching the dusty corners of the interwebs, I started to find better answers. First of all, we have to understand that we are working with our subconscious mind. When you wake up, your conscious mind has very little control in decision making. This is how you can know you should get up, but you still go back to bed. We have to learn to speak the language of the subconscious. And while that sounds all glamorous and confusing, it's really not. Here we unlock the first of three keys. Remove any and all friction. It turns out that a profound part of our subconscious mind is that it tries to move us in the direction of least resistance. After your alarm goes off, preferably an actual alarm clock across the room, the path of least resistance is obviously to go back to bed. So what we need to do is figure out how to make it as easy as possible to not go back to bed. And we can do this by removing as much friction from the initial process of getting up and the initial moments in our decisions and what we decide to do. Think of it like you're taking the morning and you're just automating the process as much as possible so there's not nearly as much like conscious thinking that needs to happen. You get up, you do this, you do that, you do that, and you move on. Because if you get up and you have to make decisions first thing in the morning when you don't feel like making decisions, your brain's gonna choose the easier route, which generally means going back to bed. Here's a list of some of the things I found that can help automate this process. The night before, lay out your outfit for the next day. It's one less decision you have to make in the morning. Then decide what you want to accomplish tomorrow. That way your day begins with a destination in sight. Another huge one is you have to find a way to kickstart your internal clock, AKA turn a light on. I did this by buying a smart light bulb from Amazon for like $8 and I set it to turn on five minutes before my alarm goes off. And the coolest part of this is your skin can actually pick up light waves. So even though you're still asleep, the light signals your body to begin reducing your melatonin and start the waking up process. And most of what I found fell into this category and, and these little like little hacks that everybody talks about. And to be honest, I was a little bit annoyed and frustrated at this point because I was like, ah, like there, there's gotta be a more powerful way to help this process other than all of these little things that people talk about. And it turns out that there is. And in fact, we've actually been working against ourselves. Dwayne Johnson gets up at 4 a.m. every morning. He says that it is his anchor, defining him as willing to outwork anyone no matter what. There's something here that makes him get up every day, something that he has found that the rest of us can just as easily tap into. It's another aspect of the subconscious language. The second key, pain and pleasure. You see, our subconscious instinctively moves us away from pain and towards what is pleasurable and comfortable for us. It's a way of safeguarding our existence, basically. It's trying to keep us safe. So when that annoying blaring sound yanks you out of dreamland, what do you think the subconscious mind's 
instant response to that is. Well, it's going to view it as a threat and something that should be eliminated as quickly as possible. And so we turn off our alarm and go back to bed. So why doesn't Dwayne Johnson do this? Well, for him, going back to bed has a different meaning than it does for us. For him, going back to bed means that he is not willing to put in the hard work to beat the competition that he is up against or to outwork his competition. Therefore, for him, getting back in bed means incredible amounts of pain because it directly goes against one of the core standards of his life. And therefore, bed equals massive amounts of pain. And for him to subject himself to that is probably Un, it's not even a question in his mind. And that sounds overly dramatic and drastic, right? But the principle is the same. I'll give you an example. So think back to a time when you like leapt out of bed, like you got out of bed, turned off your alarm and you were off on your day. Like you went off to do something. Usually when that happens, there's something pulling you that is something that if you missed would cause incredible amounts of pain. Maybe it's like your first job interview or maybe you're getting up to go hiking with your best friend or you're leaving on you know vacation early in the morning, you're super excited about it. The idea of missing that and of sleeping through that and not getting out of bed for that enjoyable thing is so painful that you immediately link going back to bed as that painful experience because that is what's gonna cause you to miss this other amazing thing. And so you get out of bed, bang, you go for it. Because the idea, like just like Dwayne Johnson, the idea of going back to bed, your subconscious literally links that as pain because it's like, this is gonna cause me to miss out on this. And so it's twofold. The idea of missing out is way too painful, but the enjoyable pleasure of going on vacation or of doing this, going to a theme park or whatever you're gonna do outweighs and pulls you away from that. I found this all very interesting and it got me thinking, what if I could link in my subconscious that going back to bed was painful and not going back to bed was pleasurable? And I found that you can do this through internal and external drivers. External drivers would be something like if you don't get up in five minutes after your alarm goes off, then you don't get to drink coffee in the morning. It's an external pain or punishment, or it could be an external um, reward or pleasure. If you get up within five minutes, then you get to enjoy your nice cup of coffee and the relaxing ritual of brewing and drinking that. However, internal drivers are much, much more powerful. For example, one of my standards that I, I try my best to live by is I try to push myself outside of my comfort zone on a regular basis or whenever I get the opportunity to do so. Going back to bed would be going directly against that. But getting up right away is proof instantly that I'm living in that standard. So if you would like to use this tool as well, figure out how to link going back to bed as painful and getting up as pleasurable. You can be creative with this. A standard could be that you spend quality time with your children. Okay, so by getting up in time, that allows you to finish enough work so that when they get up, you can eat breakfast with them. And not getting up would be to directly go against who you believe you are or should be. And that's just an example, but the way you communicate this to yourself is really, really important. And it takes a little bit of thought and creativity, but anybody can do it. And like these examples have shown, it's you, you need something bigger than yourself that's driving you or by linking it to going back to bed as going against your standards, against who you believe you are as an individual, your identity. I am not the kind of person that, that does this or this. I'm the type of person that does this. And then your actions will tend to flow out of that. And I don't know all of those aspects of your life, so I can't really give you a way of doing that, you kind of have to figure that out on your own, but this tool can be applied in so many different areas of life. So I gave a few examples of how I applied that or, or how other people could apply that, but it's gonna vary. So I'm just giving you the tool and allowing you to use that. Or another way of thinking about this is create a mental picture of what a person that goes back to bed looks like in your mind. Like what is that person like? What is their character like? Are they disciplined? Are they committed, like all of these things. And then contrast that with what is a picture of a kind of person that gets out of bed immediately. They're disciplined, they're committed, they get up, they move, they go about their day, they're driven. Which person do you want to be? And the beauty of this is that you get to choose. Whatever your behavior is, your actions is gonna back up either one of those people. And then the last thing I found is that you need to find a way to prevent your future self from backing out. And this is like the final master key and it's called a commitment device. And this is really, really cool. It's where you, you literally lock your future self 
into following through so that it cannot back out. And this is a powerful, powerful tool, not just for getting out of bed, but like so many areas of life. And instead of trying to cram it into the end portion of this video, um, I actually covered the entire process of commitment device in the previous video that I made. So I'll put that in the dead center of the screen. If you're interested in taking this to a whole new level, then this is the video you wanna check out. It will give you tons of examples and plenty of details on how to do that.